Uh, Lieutenant Joseph Arnold, this is the Hose Deployment Station, Engine Company Operations. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is, number one, our structural firefighting procedures. There's still quite a few confused on the first engine, second engine, third engine's duties. Then we'll talk about some hose deployment, whether it be one firefighter hose deployment, two firefighter hose deployment. We'll talk about deploying in a stairwell versus stairway. We'll talk about different nozzle options, uh, but some of the different hose loads that are out there now. First and foremost, I've been an engine guy all my life. I am a big believer that everything gets better when you put the fire out. Everything gets better when you put the fire out. So what should be the goal of that first in engine? Put the fire out, right? Put the fire out. By our procedures, their goal is get water on a fire as soon as possible. The officer of the first in engine, what's his primary job? Size up, what else? Well, we're laying a tail. We always bring water. Size up and what goes with size up? Risky. 360. Size up and 360, right? I'm a big believer of trying to get to see four sides of the building. And I'm not talking about doing laps around a thing. I'm talking about just seeing four sides of the building. Why? What are we looking for? Number one, we're trying to find the fire, right? What's actually burning? Use your tick. Look for the heat signature. Find out what the best access is for that fire. And to me, more importantly, if things start to go bad inside that building, how am I getting out? If I've got to bail out, how am I getting there? Do I have a porch window off on the Bravo side? Is it now four stories in the back instead of two stories in the front, so now I'm not bailing out of a window? The Leofall fire. We had a bail out when it flashed over beneath us. We know exactly where we had to go because we got to paint a picture. If things start going bad, how am I going to get out? As an officer, you do your walk around, you see smoke coming out of the attic, where's the first place you look for the fire? Basement. See if there's an exterior access. Remember, plan A on any basement fire is exterior access. Right? Far too many times we're crawling across the first floor and falling into a hole. Take a look and see exactly what's going on. One of the decisions you have to make, is it offensive or is it defensive? Again, just because it's a vacant structure does not mean it's not occupied. There are plenty of occupied vacant structures out there. Make that decision early on. Now, I'm not saying if you've got fire blowing out of every window and every door, we need to be going in. We've got to be smart. But we risk a lot to save a lot. You have to make that decision early on. Where should that first line go? To the seat of the fire. How? Like from the unburned side? I don't care. Get the water on the fire as quickly as possible. From the unburned to the burn. Primary means of egress. Maybe even a transitional tack. Remember the quick water drill we did? We've got heavy fire on one, we've got people hanging out above us. Getting water on the fire as quickly as possible means getting that fire knocked down on the first floor as quickly as possible. Sometimes it may mean squirting it down from the outside first and then going in, the transitional attack. But the goal is to get water on the fire as quickly as possible. That engine in service we had about two and a half years ago, the biggest problem we saw was 85% of engine officers would jump off and grab hose. We weren't doing our 360. We have to stay dedicated as officers to try to find where that fire is. Try to find our best access to that fire. Do your 360. Look for those building hazards. Try to find out if things get bad, how am I going to bail out of this structure? Second in engine, what's their primary responsibility? A, they lay a tail, always bring water. Then what? What's their primary job? Assisting the first engine. Thank you. Their primary job is make sure that first in engine doesn't need help. And it's communicating. Hey, 24s, you need help with your line? No, we're good. Okay. Or, yeah, we need help. Your number one job is make sure that first line gets to the seat of fire as quickly as possible. If that first in engine is good and they don't need help, then what's your job? Backup line. Which way? The exact same way. The exact same way. You're following that first line in because if that first in engine has a problem with their supply line, if they have a problem with their pumper, if their line gets cut in half, you have to get that backup line in place to get to the seat of the fire. Dogger's a good example. 49's line was stuck. They couldn't advance to the seat of the fire. The 31 should have been able to take that backup line to the seat of the fire. That's got to be our primary goal. And again, communication is big. We have benchmarks on scene. We have benchmarks, water on a fire. We have a benchmark, fire's knocked down. If you're that second in engine, you hear fire's knocked down on one, now where are we taking that backup line? Floor above. They communicate that. Hey, you guys good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're going up to two. Communicate that. 
Third in engine company, what do they do? Do they have to lay a tail? Yes, by our procedures, yes. But if he says don't worry about a tail, we're not worried about a tail, right? Command can tell them not to worry about it. What's their primary job? Mm, nope. It depends on where they uh, thank you. What does it depend on? What's the second in engine doing? If the second in engine is helping the first in engine with their primary line, now the third in engine has to lay the backup line. That's the whole reason why they were added. We added that third engine to make sure that backup line gets laid every single time. If the second engine is helping that first engine, you have to lay a backup line, whether it be from your pumper or the second engine's pumper. Get that backup line right through the same door. Now, if the first engine has their line, second engine has their line, now you bring another line to the front door to wherever command tells you to go. He may say, hey, I want you up in the attic. He may say, hey, I want you around on the exposure side. He may say, just stand by here because we've got one line operating on one, We've got one line operating on two. You're going to be the backup line to both of those. It could be that the first and second engine can't find the seat of the fire. Maybe now you've got to go in a different way to find the seat of the fire. A good rule of thumb, remember, try not to get three lines going in the same entrance. If it gets to be too much, limit it to two. So if you are that third in engine and you are going in, think about maybe going a different way to get that exposure line up into the attic, whether it be another set of steps, whether it be a fire escape, whether it be ground ladders. Try not to get three lines going in the same direction. Building like this, what size fire line are we taking? Inch and three quarter, all day long, right? Small building. There's nowhere I can't go or an inch and three quarter line. How about the Coca-Cola plant across the street? Two and a half. Does that make a difference what size line we use on our procedures? Yes. Because if the first in engine is laying a two and a half inch line, hey, we're laying a two and a half inch line. What does the second in engine have to do by procedures? They have to assist. They have to assist the first in engine laying a two and a half inch supply line, period. So now what's the third in engine doing? Now they're laying a backup line. And again, I've got a pretty good report. It's a 24th of my unit. Brett, do and I get along real well. We communicate a lot. We're talking on the radio before we get there. I know exactly what hydrant I'm taking. He knows what hydrant he's taking. We're always trying to come from opposite directions. If they're supposed to be first in, they're going to be first in. It's my job as second in to make sure they get that line going. The days of us standing there in the stairs and blocking somebody out should be over. Guilty, I've done it. I've done it. Rick Tracy and I are in the backyard yelling at each other because I tried to block them out because we were supposed to be first in. They tried to get ahead of us. I wasn't going to let them, by God. Hopefully I'm smarter than that now. Hopefully, or again, we are all on the same team. The goal is to get water on the fire as soon as possible. Stay dedicated to that. But the companies you're running in have that gentleman's agreement where if they're supposed to be first in and they are, you help them. You don't try to trip them or step on a line to get in front of them. The goal is to get water on the fire as soon as possible. Stay dedicated to that task. Any questions on first, second, or third in engine? So this house is on fire. We lay off across the street. Our pumper pulls to here. How many firefighters do I have to lay that attack line to the front door? I got one, right? Because what's my job as the officer? I need to be doing a 360. I tell my guys, unless I tell you all that, meet me at the front door with that line because I've got to find the best access to that fire. Can one guy lay a line from that pumper to the front door? Yes, yes. I should hope so. How much is three loops? How many feet is three loops of hose? 50 feet. So if I get four loops on my shoulder, I've got about 60, 70 feet. First guy off. Flip, don't flip, doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. I've always flipped because I've always been a flipper. I like having that nozzle right here by my heart. If you don't flip, don't care. Totally up to you. But I'm by myself. So now I reach back with three fingers and I grab three loops. Now what do I have in my hands? I got 100 feet and I got 70 feet. I've got about 170 feet on my body. Can that get me to that front door? I should hope so. Step on me, E.T. Step on me. My bottom finger goes off first. We're walking. We're walking. We're all walking.
What is my goal for the point of service? How much hose do I want to have? 50 feet. If Captain Case's car is my front door, I want to have 50 feet at the point of service. A good trick, take that front hand, go straight, step forward. So now I got a fairly neat line. I take the nozzle, I take the coupling, and I walk forward. Now what do I have at the front door? 50 feet. It's easy as that. Can I do that from the bottom of the steps on one to the top of the landing on two? Absolutely. Absolutely. But remember, if you're going up steps, not only do I have to kneel on this when I get that line charged, but I've also got to kneel on this. Because if I don't, where's this hose going to go? Zing! Right back down the steps. Right? Kneel on both. Again, I'm a big fan of taking that line dry as far as I can. If I don't have smoke, I'm keeping it dry because it's a lot easier to move a dry line than it is moving a charge line. That same in engine in service two years ago, I'm literally out the window on two yelling down, there's no smoke on one, there's no smoke on two. Probably 30% of the companies charge that line on the outside and try to advance that charge line from one to two and two to three. It's a lot harder. Keep that line dry as long as you can. When you have smoke, you better have a charged line. But if you have no smoke on one, no smoke on two, it's a lot easier moving a dry line. There's a drill I do with my guys. If I'm going up to the third floor, instead of taking that four loops, I'm taking six. So now I've got 100 here and 100 here, 200 feet. It's a lot easier for that to flake off my shoulder from one to two and two to three than trying to pull it along. Everybody know where the rat house is? We park by the drill tower. They go around the side to the back in that back door across the first floor, up the steps to two, all the way across the second floor, down and back out to the back side by themselves, doing the six loops and three fingers. You can do it. It takes practice. But it's a lot easier moving a dry line than it is a charge line. Any questions on that? Again, point of service. Nozzle coupling forward. Stay back about 25, 30 feet. Gives you your 50 feet at the point of service for advancement. So now instead of laying off, I go front suction. Now how many firefighters do I have to lay that line? Now I got two. Basically the same thing. That first guy, flip, don't flip, totally up to you. Second guy, gotta, gotta, gotta flip every time. They have to flip because we want that hose flaking off their shoulder from the pumper to the point of service. So I need a helper. First guy, you've got to stop and wait. If I take off, can my second guy put hose on his shoulder? No. No. I've got to stop and wait. Be dedicated and wait. Second guy, you helping me, Artie? Yeah. Jump in, buddy. Now when he moves, I move. So when I see him getting ready to put hose on his shoulder, grab four and flip. When he moves, I move. Okay, stop. What do I want to do with this? Leave it on the ground? He's not very coordinated. He's probably going to trip over it. Plus now it's a hazard, right? Catches on cars, catches on posts, catches on steps. We want to start a trade as close together as possible. If I go too fast, stop. Stop. If I go too fast, now I'm pulling it off the back of his shoulder. So stay close together and move. You ready? ready. Let's go. Work together. Up steps, around cars, flake. Step on it. He flips it, flakes off the top of his shoulder. You're good. It's gonna drop. Yeah. We're walking, we're walking. We're walking. So say I think the fire's up on a second floor. I get to my front door, I open up the door, and now I've got smoke. I can't do nozzle coupling forward, but I have a whole bunch of hose on my shoulder. Again, front hand, 
Step forward. I call it the middle of the W. If you look back, grab the middle loop and come backwards. Now what do I have left? I have the nozzle and a coupling at the front door. I have my 50 feet for advancement. Again, front hand, step forward, you got a nice lean line, look at the middle of the W and go backwards with it. Now I've got my 50 feet for advancement. Don't take that pile on your shoulder and just drop it straight down. Now I've got no idea what I have. Front hand, step forward, middle of the W and go back. Any questions on that? What nozzle do I have to use on every single fire? One that puts out water, right? What's the goal? Put the fire out. This gives me about 200 gallons a minute. Smoothbore gives me about 200 gallons a minute. Chief nozzle gives me about 200 gallons a minute. They will all put the fire out. Get water on the fire as quickly as possible. I like the chief nozzle because when I'm done, I like to be able to hydraulically ventilate. Some guys prefer the smoothbore for penetration. Some guys still like the vindicator. It doesn't matter. Get water on the fire as soon as possible. That's the goal. Stairwell versus stairway. What is a stairwell, first of all? Yeah, you got the big old well hole in the middle. It's open. Why do we care as engine officers if it's a stairwell versus stairway? Keep going. Say if it's a six story building. What's a good rule of thumb for stairway? How much hose per floor do we need? One section. But if now if I'm going up to the sixth floor and I use a stairwell, one section now takes me up four floors. It goes a lot further. I can use that cross lay to get up to the sixth floor now. Stairwell, one section for about four floors. Stairway, one section per floor. But what I got to remember if I'm using a stairwell, once I come up, you've got to strap that hose in. Because if you don't, where's it going to go? Zing! Bye! And you've got three options. Either on the fire floor itself. I'm not a big fan of that because I come over the top of the railing. Now my hose immediately goes down to the ground. So now I got to worry about this kink. I prefer having a little half landing before the fire floor or even the floor below to tie it off. And again, we've kind of teach the new kids about a hillbilly half hitch. Once you get up there, throw this over top of the post, call for water, and then strap this thing down. Because we found it way too many times, they were so worried about strapping it down, you'd have a minute, minute and a half to your time before you'd actually call for water. So you've got time, get that water flowing. Take either webbing or a hose strap to secure that to keep it from sliding off. Again, a good rule of thumb, 50 feet on the fire floor for advancement. So don't have a hundred foot on your shoulder and drop it all down. Use that floor below to flake that hose off. And again, if we're going stairway, a good rule of thumb is keep that hose as wide as possible going up. So when it charges, it'll seek the outside wall, keep it from sliding. Plus it won't be a trip hazard. Plus you've got more room to advance. And again, anytime you've got pinch points, always try to stay on the outside of that pinch point. So if Artie's my pinch point, I can't move hose around like this because now I'm between my pinch point and the hose. Try to get on the outside. I'm a big fan of pulling with the one hand and pushing with the other because you can push a charged hose line pretty far. Pull with one and push with the other. Because remember, what's our job as the engine company officer? Is it our job to be here? No, it's not. If we wanted a nozzle, we shouldn't promote it. Our job is to be behind. Our job is to be supervising. Be those eyes and ears to check and make sure if things start to go bad. Again, if we've got high heat conditions but we don't see flame, are we squirting high heat? Yes, 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 absolutely. If you see flames, knock it down. If you get high heat conditions, Open up the nozzle, cool it down. Goes a long way. Any questions on that? There are also some companies out there, I know the 35s, I know the 21s, they still carry the Cleveland load. They basically have this on their cross lay, 50 feet coiled up. So instead of taking that nozzle cupping going forward or middle of the W back, they have it all right here. So you take this to the point of service, drop it down, take your straps off, Charge your line and you're good. The benefit of it, when you're pulling this line out and it's charged, it kind of gives you a little kick in the butt, helps you get around pinch points. 
But again, don't freak out if you see this on some of the cross lays. Also too, walk around and look and see. Because on a two and a half inch dead load, most companies now are carrying it Y with either 100, 150 feet of inch and three quarter to horseshoe load. Or on those long lays, 400, 500 feet, the officer will take that horseshoe load, go to the house, the point of service, do his 360, while the roughnecks are bringing a two and a half inch hose up, they'll connect it and now that's their attack line. Some companies are still using that to crossfire. But always remember too, with that Y, make sure you have either hose strap in your pocket or one already on it, because you've got to make sure that that is opened up and strapped in the open position so someone can't close it by accident. Any questions on that? Again, the primary goal, water on the fire as quickly as possible. First in engine, second in engine, third in engine. We taught everybody going through driver's training. We want to get back to the days from the pumper to the front door is the driver's job. That last 50 feet, the driver's job. It's quick water. Way too many times we saw the driver so worried about the hydrant, he missed a call to start the water. One officer had to call four times before he got water. A minute and 45 seconds it added to their time. Everyone's priority needs to be getting water on the fire as quickly as possible. Make sure your drivers understand. Again, this flows about 200 gallons a minute. We've got 500 gallons on that pumper. How long before I run out of water in the tank? Fooling, full flow the entire time. Two and a half minutes. That is a ton of time. If a driver can't hook up a hydrant in two and a half minutes, he probably shouldn't be a driver. Everyone's priority, get water on the fire as soon as possible. But we're also trying to get back to the days of getting that pressure revved up to 150, 175 pounds and then open it up, pop out all those kinks. Again, from the pumper to the front door, the driver needs to make sure we have no kinks in that line. Everyone's priority should be getting water on the fire as soon as possible. Any questions on that? 